it's been a big year for Star Wars and for developer Respawn Entertainment, which released Apex Legends at the beginning of 2019 and is closing it out with Jedi Fallen Order. Sandwiched between Baby Yoda and The Rise of Skywalker, the first new wholly single-player Star Wars adventure in years has some high expectations to live up to. And it's a fine adventure game, mixing ingredients like The Legend of Zelda, Dark Souls and more with a dash of Star Wars seasoning. While Fallen Order is a pretty game, with some nicely detailed character models, its performance on PC can be a bit rough at times. That's unexpected for a game this long in development, but it is Respawn's first game in Unreal Engine 4, so that might have involved some growing pains. Stuttering is at times a problem, particularly with slower storage devices, likely due to the game engine loading in data. Jedi Fallen Order is disappointingly sparse when it comes to settings. Besides the global preset, you can adjust view distance, shadow, texture and visual effects quality, and anti-aliasing. Each setting has medium, high, and epic options, because PCs don't need a low option apparently. If you're hoping to eke out some extra performance, turning down post-processing and shadow quality is your best bet, and possibly visual effects. You can also toggle motion blur, film grain, and chromatic aberration, but that's about it. There's no option for an unlimited frame rate though Fallen Order does at least support 144 FPS. Other games built using Unreal Engine 4 have offered significantly more detailed graphics settings. We'd point to Gears of War 5 as an especially good example. Perhaps Fallen Order is lacking here because the developers were focused on the console version, or maybe Respawn just doesn't feel it's important. Fallen Order is missing some of the bells and whistles, but that's forgivable if performance is otherwise smooth. Unfortunately, we also ran into some technical issues while benchmarking this Star Wars adventure. Thanks to MSI for providing the components needed for this benchmarking. We tested Fallen Order on 16 graphics cards, plus several CPUs and laptops to get a complete picture of how it performs on a range of PC hardware. Jedi Fallen Order doesn't have a built-in benchmark, so we used a test sequence running around the planet Dathomir. Right out of the gate, you can see performance is hitting a speed limit of some sort. At 1080p and medium settings, even the mighty RTX 2080 Ti only averages 130fps, and lesser cards deliver very similar results. The GTX 1070 is only 10 frames per second slower. More positively, Fallen Order still runs at more than 60fps average on low-end 4GB cards like the RX 570 and GTX 1650, making it very playable on a budget gaming PC. An uglier problem shows up when you look at the 97th percentile scores, revealing frame rate dips to a consistent low of around 80 FPS across all the high-end cards we tested, and that's with a fast CPU and SSD storage. The power of the cards clearly isn't to blame for these hiccups. We tried using UE4 Console Unlocker to remove the frame rate cap, but performance didn't improve much. It seems the main bottleneck is the CPU, and even a 5GHz Intel chip isn't sufficient to max out frame rates. Turning settings up to epic, things don't look all that different. The high-end cards all deliver similar frame rates, with averages over 100 FPS and 97th percentile scores right around 75 FPS. A few cards swap positions in our charts, but if you have a GTX 1070, any of Nvidia's new super cards, or an RX 5700 or 5700 XT, you can easily play on epic settings. The performance difference from medium to epic is negligible, and you'll get slightly prettier alien worlds to explore for the small trade-off. Weaker cards can't maintain a stable 60 FPS at epic, so with an RX 570 or GTX 1650 you'll either have to put up with some frame rate drops, or pick and choose settings to find a balance that works for you. Again. Epic doesn't look substantially better, so running at medium or high settings isn't really a concern. Moving on to 1440p, we're still not really GPU limited at the high end. Look at the RTX 2080 Ti, which is still hitting nearly 120 frames per second. Compared to 1080p Epic, most of the top cards lose 10 to 15 FPS of performance, which still keeps them in the ballpark of 90 frames per second. 97th percentile frames still show some stark drops, but if you shelled out for a powerful graphics card, it's still going to be able to hold the line around 60 FPS. Everything from the RX 5700 and RTX 2060 and above is very playable at 1440p. 
At 4K, we finally see a major drop-off, with only the RTX 2080 Ti managing to maintain 60 frames per second. Minimums drop below that, however, and you'd be better off tweaking a few settings down a notch. Nvidia holds a slight lead in overall performance as well, but nothing too far out of line. If you're serious about running 4K at maximum quality, Jedi Fallen Order does support SLI on Nvidia GPUs. It doesn't help much at lower settings, but at 4K the 2080 Ti potentially gets a 60% boost in performance. The problem is that it also causes even more severe stuttering at times, with stalls that can last a few seconds. So not really something you should pay $2,000 to experience, in other words. Checking out the CPU testing results, given the limited performance we saw at lower settings, you might expect the choice of processor to have a big impact. Turns out, that's only partially the case. Jedi Fallen Order appears to depend most on CPU clock speed, with the 38% boost in megahertz on the overclocked 8700K mostly matching the difference in performance between it and the lowly Core i3-8100. Cores and threads seem to be far less critical. Regardless, the i3-8100 and Ryzen 5 3600 still clear 60 FPS minimums, and it's not a huge jump considering what we've seen in other games. CPU performance is less of a factor if you're using a slower graphics card or running at higher resolutions. The 30% gap between the fastest and slowest CPUs shrinks to about 15% at 1440p and about 5% at 4K. AMD's Ryzen 3950X also performs a bit worse than the 3900X, so Star Wars doesn't quite know what to do with the extra cores and threads. But really, a Core i5-8400 or better, or Ryzen 7 3700X should be more than sufficient regardless of your graphics card. Given what we just said about CPU clock speeds being more important than core and thread counts, that ends up having a pretty significant impact on laptop performance. Only the GE75 mostly manages to keep minimums above 60, and even at epic quality, the laptops are all slower than a desktop RTX 2060, provided the desktop has a fast CPU, of course. Hitting the 120Hz or 144 refresh rates on these laptops, even at minimum settings, unfortunately isn't in the cards. You can see the CPU clock speed bottleneck quite clearly with both the desktop and mobile GPUs. 97th percentile frame rates are similar on the desktop, while the drop in clock speed has a commensurate drop in frame rates on the laptops. There's no need to turn down the settings with an RTX laptop at least, as Epic settings only reduce frame rates by about 5 FPS. Thanks once again to MSI for sponsoring our performance analysis and benchmarking of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. The good news for Star Wars fans is that Jedi Fallen Order runs reasonably well on most recent graphics cards, and there's not a huge difference between the medium and maximum quality settings. Even stopping and comparing still images, there's not much of an improvement. The bad news is that, if you're hoping for buttery smooth combat at 144fps on your high-end PC and monitor, you'll be disappointed. I keep thinking we should be done with frame rate caps in 2019, but developers keep proving me wrong. Fallen Order also benefits from faster storage devices. We normally test using SSDs, but switching to a hard drive causes more frequent stutters when the game loads in data for new areas. An older PC with hard drive storage and a modest graphics card isn't going to be the best experience in Fallen Order. Much like the recent Star Wars movies, Jedi Fallen Order as a whole feels safe. It meshes together elements of other games in a reasonably competent fashion, but it doesn't forge into new territory. This isn't a Knights of the Old Republic take on Star Wars, and certainly not Jedi Knight where lightsabers can actually chop human foes in half. But hey, it manages to keep a teen rating, which isn't what many of us wanted, I suspect. Thanks for watching.